today in this lecture we are going to talk about the rheumatic valvular lesion so basically what are rheumatic valvular lesion these are basically lesions of the heart valves which are which are caused by rheumatic fever so basically in our last lecture we discussed the heart sounds we discussed the first heart sound we discussed the first heart sound and the second heart sound and we discussed that basically the first heart sound is due to the closure of the mitral and the tricuspid valve and the second heart sound is due to the closure of the aortic and the pulmonary valve now if there is some abnormality in the valves for example this is the uh, mitral valve here we have the mitral valve and here we have the aortic valve if there is any abnormality in these valve then these uh, sounds the first heart sound the second heart sound they will be different and apart from differences in these heart sounds there will be some extra heart sounds and that will be uh, uh, called as the murmurs now there are a lot of conditions there are a lot of conditions which can damage the heart valves but here we are going to discuss the rheumatic valvular lesion now we are not going to de in detail of rheumatic fever but as we are following our textbook and they have discussed the rheumatic valvular lesions so we are just uh, going to briefly discuss the uh, rheumatic fever and just uh, briefly mention the abnormalities that the rheumatic fever can cause in the heart valves because a rheumatic fever and the rheumatic valvular lesions are one of the most common causes of the uh, valvular lesions apart from that there are other causes like ischemic heart disease or congen congenital abnormalities calcifications which can occur in these valves but we will focus today on the uh, rheumatic valvular lesions so what is basically rheumatic valvular lesion rheumatic uh, valvular lesion occurs when a person is infected with these bacteria for example for example these are the bacteria known as beta uh, group a beta hemolytic streptococci group a beta hemolytic strep these are bacteria which are responsible for rheumatic fever what they do these bacteria basically they will infect the human body and most of the time they will cause the sore throat or scarlet fever and in response to these bacteria in response to these bacteria the human body the human body will make some antibodies now these are the antibodies which have been formed against these bacteria now these bacteria have caused infection in the throat for example but these antibodies when they start reacting against the uh, group a streptococci or group a beta hemolytic streptococci they acts against uh, they act against certain proteins that are present in the uh, gen genome or in the uh, in the structure of these bacteria and similar proteins some proteins which are similar in structure to the proteins present in the bacteria or some similar uh, substances which are present in the human body these antibodies will also act against uh, those proteins as well for example when these antibodies these antibodies when they act against these bacteria and try to destroy these bacteria in the meanwhile they will start acting against these valves as well and most of the time they will act against the mitral valve they will act against the mitral valve which is the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle and the second most common valve is the aortic valve which is basically the valve between the left ventricle and the aorta so the antibodies basically they are acting against some proteins or some structure of the bacterium but similar structure some identifiable similar structure is also present in these valves so these antibodies also starts damaging these valves as well and when they start damaging these valve there is some inflammation and some lesion starts uh, occurring on these valve which are basically known as rheumatic valvular lesion now these valvular lesions can lead to stenosis in these valve or it can also lead to regurgitation and it can also cause mixed disease as well but most of the time most of the time the rheumatic valvular lesion will occur in the mitral valve and the second most common valve involved is the aortic valve now the rheumatic fever the rheumatic fever or these antibodies they not only affect these valve they will also affect some joints and they will also act against uh, some structures in the skin and they will also uh, act, uh, they will basically have some multi system involvement and to diagnose the rheumatic fever to diagnose the rheumatic fever we need the jones criteria in which we have some major and uh, minor uh, uh, definitions like some uh, major components and minor components so carditis or the involvement of the heart is basically a major component of the uh, jones criteria now we are not going into detail of rheumatic fever we are not going into details of jones uh, criteria or we are not going to treat the uh, discuss the treatment of the rheumatic uh, fever at this stage we are just discussing the physiology and we are just we are discussing the physiology of the heart so we must uh, discuss some of the abnormalities which uh, basically distorts the physiology of the human body so this is a, a very important condition this is a very rheumatic fever is very very important so when these conditions starts occurring the rheumatic valvular lesion starts occurring on the valve now if it leads to the adhesion of the valves now normally these there is some space there no normally when the valves open there is some space you can see through which the blood can move through which the blood can move when when the atria contract when the atria contract these valves 
open and there is some space through which blood can move from the left atrium into the left ventricle and when stenosis occur the, the different cusps of the, the the different cusps of the valve they starts uh, adhesion with each other they starts adhesion with each other which is basically uh, known as uh, stenosis so stenosis occurs stenosis occurs and it is very difficult for the atrium it is very difficult for the left atrium to push the blood into the left ventricle because the space the space through which this blood was moving the space through which the blood was moving it has narrowed down to this much so this space this space has narrowed down to like this much the space after opening the space in the valves in the different cusps of the mitral valve has decreased so much that it is difficult for the left atrium to pump the blood into the left ventricle and these adhesions these uh, unions or these uh, attachment of different cusps with each other due to the rheumatic fever is basically rheumatic uh, rheumatic uh, valvular lesion and it is stenotic type it is stenotic type in which stenosis has occurred now another condition can also occur once the blood is in the left ventricle when the left ventricle pumps when the left ventricle contracts the blood normally move into the aorta the, the blood normally moves into the aorta but will not be going back into the left atrium what occurs that sometimes due to the rheumatic valvular lesions and due to some other lesions as well the, there is some abnormality in these cusps and once the uh, ventricles have contracted these valves which normally should close like this which normally should close like this and should not allow blood from left ventricle into the left atrium they now remain open they now remain open and blood can move back from the left ventricle into the left atrium even even in the systole so normally in the systole the blood should move into the aorta it should not move into the left atrium but here the, here because the valves remain closed in the systole these valves they open like this they open like this blood can uh, move one way the blood can come from the left atrium into the left ventricle but they will not allow blood to move from the left from the left ventricle into the atrium it, they are one way valves but in the regurgitation there is some abnormality some abnormality which basically allows which basically allows the blood to move back from the ventricle into the atrium which is known as basically regurgitation now the stenosis and regurgitation they can occur in mitral valve they can occur in the aortic valve they can occur in the uh, tricuspid valve they can also occur in the pulmonary valve but in rheumatic fever the most common valve the most common valve that is involved is the mitral valve and the pathology is that due to the infection uh, of group a beta hemolytic streptococci there is uh, antibody formation those antibodies not only react against the bacteria but they also act they also start acting against different parts of the human body and the valves are one of their favorite sites where they will start inflammation and they will react against uh, the valves so which will either lead to stenosis and can also lead to regurgitation but these stenosis and the regurgitation can occur due to a lot of other conditions as well now in pathology section we will uh, discuss in detail the uh, rheumatic fever the, the points which it involves and the joints the jones criteria to diagnose rheumatic fever and then we will also discuss the treatment and the prevention method as well but it is uh, out of the scope of this lecture at this time thanks a lot for watching the video